If you ever go to the village of Cong, spelled C-O-N-G, in Ireland, about four miles to the west of it, you'll find a cave called Pigeonhole Cave. Now, it's a beautiful cave to visit. You walk down 68 steps that are handmade in the stone, and it's an immense cavern. And you look up, and you can see stalactites and all sorts of things inside that cave. And the waters that rush through the cave, they feed as they come out the lake and the pond right near the old mill in Kong. And the sound of the, that water rushing through the cave, it sounds like a banshee screaming. Now people that go visit that cave, they don't visit it because of its beauty. They don't visit it because of the sound of that banshee screaming. They visit it because of the legend of the white trout, which goes something like this. Once upon a time, a long time ago, in a castle that was above the cave, there lived a beautiful young maiden. Now she was promised to the king's son to be married. But unfortunately, before they could be married, the king's son was ambushed and murdered and thrown into the pond above the cave. He couldn't keep his promise to the fair maiden, and more's the pity. Well, that fair maiden went out of her mind with grief at the loss of the king's son, for she was a tender-hearted lass, just like you and I, and she pined away until one day she was never seen again, nor good or bad or either. And no one knew what happened to her. But the story goes that she was taken by fairies. It was about the same time that the white trout first appeared. Now, no one in the village knew what this creature was, this white trout, because a white trout was never afore been heard of, nor since. And that white trout, it stayed in that pond by the cave for a year upon year, longer than I can even remember. Longer than the oldest member of the village can remember. That white trout was there. And it was said that that white trout was a fairy. All the villagers, they felt that no one should do any hurt nor harm by their hands to that white trout. And none was done. That was. Until the day those evil sinner soldiers came into the village. And they laughed and they jeered and they jibed at the citizens of that village for their beliefs. And one of them, one villainous sinner, he was bold enough to say that he was going to go catch that white trout and have him for his own supper, the braggart that he was. And he went. He went to that stream in the cave where it was last seen. And he waited patiently. And he put his fingers in the water. And he waited so he could tickle that trout in order to catch it. And catch it he did. And he quickly went home. And he threw it in a pan and put it on the fire to cook. Well, such a screeching from that creature would, would hurt your ears. But that villainous soldier, he'd have to hold in his sides from laughing for that creature being cooked. And he waited a goodly amount of time when he thought one side was done. And he flipped it over to the other side. And lo and behold, there was not a scorch mark at all on that white trout. It seemed very odd. Little did he know what was in store for him. But he waited a little bit more time and he flipped the fish over again to the other side. And there he waited and again there was not a scorch mark on the white trout. Odd as it may seem, he flipped it over a few more times until he finally decided that even though it doesn't look cooked at all on the outside, it must be well done on the inside. 
And he took a knife and fork for which to eat it. And as he stuck that knife into the fish, you heard such a murderous scream that would take the life right from you. And that fish, it flipped itself right out of the pan and on to the middle of the floor. And there, where it was laying, arose a beautiful young maiden the most gorgeous creature you ever saw. She was dressed all in white. She had a gold band around her hair, and she had blood streaming down her arm. What you going to cut me for, she said, showing her arm to the soldier. Well, the sight nearly lost his eyes. He didn't know what to say. Couldn't you have left me in my cool and comfortable place where you snared me? I was just doing my duty there. Well, the soldier, he was trembling like a dog in a wet sack. He, he begged for his life. He apologized. He didn't know what to say. He stammered out, I, I didn't know you were doing your duty. Had I known, I, I, I would have not meddled with you, a good soldier that I am. Of course I was doing my duty, she said. I was waiting for my true love. He was going to meet me by the water. Now, if he misses me because I'm not in the water and you've taken me, I'm going to turn you into a pinkeen and I'm going to hunt you forevermore as the grass grows and the water flows. Well, a pinkeen, for those of you that don't know it, is a small minnow-like fish. And the thought of being turned into a pinkeen scared the man to death almost. And again, he begged his for forgiveness, and he pleaded with her, what could he do? Well, first of all, you can renounce your evil courses, she said. And you must change and repent now before it's too late. You must become a good man in the future, and always do your duty, and never make fun of others for their belief. And now, if you'll take me back to the river where you left me, where you took me out from, but, ma'am, I could never drown a beautiful woman as yourself. And no sooner had he finished saying that, that the woman disappeared, turned back into the trout again. Well, quickly he grabbed a clean plate, and he took that trout, and he ran for dear life to get to that place before her lover showed up. And he ran. And he ran, and he made it to the cave and the stream, and he threw the trout in. And where it hit the water, the water turned blood red. And the soldiers stared at it for a while as the stream cleansed itself and purified itself. From that day on, that soldier was an altered man. He was quite repentant. He did his duty regularly. He fasted three days a week, and he would never during fasting days eat fish. He could no longer stomach a fish since having that experience with the white trout. And as years went on, he finally retired and became a hermit. And it was said that forevermore he always prayed for the soul of the white trout. Now if you ever go to the village of Kong, and go down to Pigeon Hole. It's said that if you're pure of heart and quite repentant, that you'll get to see that white trout. And you'll know it's the same trout from the story that I just shared with you. Because on its side, you'll see a red mark where that soldier cut it. And that's the story of the white trout.